Have you ever considered starting your own website? If you want a good one, you're going to need a great web host. That's why I recommend Bluehost. And we have an exclusive offer for everyone who listens to the Adventuring the Girl Life podcast. You can get started with Bluehost for $3.95. They have impeccable customer service. They have a one-click automatic WordPress blog installation. You can't get any easier than that. And when you're ready for more than one website, there's no need to look for more hosting. Bluehost has got you covered. That's why I recommend Bluehost. And you can find this deal at www.jenwhitmoretraining.com under the resources tab or www.jenwhitmoretraining.com forward slash resources. Welcome to Adventuring the Girl Life, where we believe life for every girl should be well lived. Each week, we'll explore tips and techniques to add more adventure to your world, from fitness and self-care to career building and fulfillment in even the most mundane parts of life. So buckle up. I'm your host, Jen Whitmore, certified personal trainer, mom of two, lover of new adventures, and your new partner in adventure. Hello, girls. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so excited to be back with you every Tuesday as usual. And this week we have another special guest. I have mentioned before that we are going to have uh, lots of guests this year because I want you to understand that there are so many women out there who are adventuring the girl life very beautifully. So please welcome with me my friend, Samantha Riley. I'm so excited. Samantha, how are you? you. I'm so awesome, Jen. Thanks so much for having me on your show. I'm looking forward to talking about adventuring the girl life. That sounds so fun, right? Yay, me too. I'm so excited that you're here with us. So um, so we have talked briefly, but I want the girls to get the whole story of where you came from and what you're doing. So tell us what it is that you do currently and how did you start that? Mm, I love it. So what I do now is work with Uh, entrepreneurs and business owners. Uh, It could also be people in corporate that really want to take their life into their own hands. And what I help them do is to monetize their expertise in a different way to the way that they're doing it now so that they can really build out their thought leadership, build a freedom business, have more money uh, and make a global impact. So I help that by helping them to position themselves as the expert. So really developing their thought leadership, helping them to build their online profile so that they can build a global brand and how to leverage that to be able to get their message out to more people. So I get to work with some really, really awesome people. How I got here is, is quite a funny story. So I, I know that you got married young too. We had mentioned that on, um, at another time when we were having a chat, but I got married when I was 17. And by the time I was um, 20, I had two little, two little children under five. I was working a government job. My husband at the time was working shift work and life was super hectic. And it, I was in the office one day and I looked around and I thought, oh my goodness, this is like I was, it was like I was looking through these glasses into the future. Like I had my future glasses on. Everyone was walking around. No one was happy. No one was smiling. Everyone was overweight. Uh, it was just, you know, the people were lovely. I'm not saying they weren't, but it wasn't a super inspiring place to be. And they'd been mm-hmm. working there all their life. These people were the, the age of my parents. Um, I was super young. I was only 20. And I thought, wow, if I stay here, this is going to be me in, you know, 20 years time. And this is not what I want. So I pretty much made the decision straight away that I wanted to open my own business. Um, And at that stage, I'd been dancing all my life. So I opened up a dance studio. And within 12 months, things had gone really well. Um, I also opened up a retail store. And I left that job and had 18 amazing years super busy years, I might add, uh, but, you know, with my husband working our own business. But in 2010, uh, my husband and I separated. We'd been married 20 years and we just decided not where to walk away from this. It happened very quickly and I actually lost my businesses. So it was a super dark time for me because it was the first time in my life I'd ever been alone. My children were older. They were adults. They'd moved out of home. 
Um, I'd never been single my whole married life. I'd lost my businesses. Everything that I knew in my world was gone. And it was, oh, it was a really, really dark time. And I really was struggling, you know, on the outside, people thought that I was handling it beautifully. I was smiling, you know, I was doing all the things that I had to do, putting on the brave face, the mask, but behind the scenes, I was an absolute mess and really not functioning that well at all. So I moved to the other side of the country, decided to, to really start again and saw that what I'd been given was actually a gift, that now there was nothing left. I, I could do whatever it was I wanted. I could build my life and create it exactly to how I wanted. So I sat down and went, well, what do I want my life to look like? And for me, that was travel. It was spending time with friends and family. It was going on lots of adventures. It was like freedom was the biggest part of this. So freedom and love are my two highest core values. So I thought, how can I create a life around freedom and love? And that's when I started to really, really explore the online world and build an online business, which I could run wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted around what I was doing in my life, which was, which is a lot of travel. Yeah, that is fantastic, really. Um, first off, I want to say that I am sorry that you had to go through such a difficult time. I know that you and I spoke earlier and we just never know, you know, what people are going through. You said mm. you were putting on your brave face through your dark time and it looked pretty on the outside. And I think that's a lot of what we do, girls. We try to yeah. put on that brave face and look pretty for everyone else. And there has to be some type of, you know, kind of come to Jesus moment where we talk about what is actually going on with us and we don't have to hide behind that pretty facade. And so, Samantha, I actually didn't realize how much we have in common. You said you got married so young at 17. Mm. I was 19. Um, and then I also had my first child um, right after we got married, we got pregnant. And so I had her very early on. And then four years later, my son. So um, we have that in common. And as well as being entrepreneurs, I find that very interesting that you uh, wanted your core values to be freedom and love. And I, I just love that, that we have that's in common. That's fantastic and amazing. What a small it's world. It's so cool. I know. Um, Soul it really is. The other side of the world. <laughs> I know. Thank God for technology. I think it's so great that we've had the chance um, to, you know, meet each other and, and talk with each other and share our information with all of the girls who listen because that is one of my core values of adventuring the girl life. I want all of the girls who listen to understand that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, or where you come from, or where you currently are in life, but you can change things to be exactly how you want them to be. The mm -hmm. only thing that you have to do is focus on it. I and Actually, if I can just jump in here, because there might be some yeah. people saying it's okay for them. And the reason I'm saying that is because when someone first said to me, Sam, you're in control of your life. You can make the decision to create whatever you want. Now, at this time, I still had fingers in the business. I, was, like, I wasn't divorced. Like This is when business was a mess. Marriage mm -hmm. was a mess. I was busy with three kids. There was things happening. And someone said to me, you can, you know, you, you're in charge. I went, it's fine for you to say you're not as busy as I am just paddling under the water as fast as I can, just trying to stay afloat. Don't you what? just like want to flick those people in the forehead oh sometimes? My goodness, seriously. <laughs> and I'm saying this because someone might be thinking that about me right now. I understand. But what I realized after a while was it doesn't, what they mean when, when we say you can create it, it doesn't have to happen overnight. It might be, you know, like 10 years down the track or, you know, nine years down the track now. It's still not perfect. It's still not exactly as I want it, but it's just about knowing where I want to go and making the small changes every day. So yes. don't think I have to do it and it's okay for that person. You know, we can all do it, but just one tiny little change and or one understanding of what it is that we actually want can just be just enough to flick the switch and just change the direction. 
Yes, exactly. You are so right. Um, I was just writing some things up today and I was writing things about, uh, about focusing Mm -hmm. and we all have this, you know, like internal mental list of things that we want, we want to accomplish, we want to do in our lifetime, but we all have the one thing. Like there may be this, you know, list as long as our arm, but there's always this one thing. Every person has it that it's just the thing that is always on the list. It's always our focus, but it's almost like we're afraid to go after it or Mm. we're afraid to want it, but it's always the same thing. And so this is the whole point of the podcast and having these guests and showing you girls that Samantha is one of these people. She's one of the people that took her list. She circled the one thing and now she has brought it into fruition. She's made it come to light, to pass something that she can touch. So Samantha, go ahead and jump right into the business part. I want to know after you close that chapter on your life of losing the businesses, being out of the dance world and making your life into what it is now, where did you start and how did it, how did it grow from there? Mm. And this is interesting because it's not a, I, I started here and then I went there, you know, it's always a transition. And I think that it's the part of life that frustrates so many people, but at the same time, it's the beauty of what we go through that, that we start on this path and all these things happen. And it's just the, the path that we're on. And it just, we have to trust that it will lead us somewhere. So at the time, while I was actually running the dance studio, I also got my um, my fitness certificate. So I was a personal trainer. And at the time okay. I did that specifically to help my dance students. Cause I realized that, that my, my top, you know, the, the, what I, the really high end competitive students, whilst their technique was amazing. The one thing that was letting them down in competitions was their fitness. So that's actually why I went to get it. What ended up happening was as I was transitioning through this time, I delved deeper into personal training because I was actually enjoying working with clients one-on-one and it was almost like the focus was then off me and my problems. I was able to help other people and I really enjoyed working in the gym. The people in the gym were lots of fun. It It was a really cool lifestyle that served me at the time. What was I went into uh, wellness and I did life coaching to further help my personal training clients and I used to run wellness workshops and retreats and what started happening was people were in these retreats you know which are saying creating your ideal life a lot of people were saying well the part of my life that I don't really like is that I'm in a job I actually want to start my business so I was starting to get more people asking me about how I started my businesses than how you know, how to look after their nutrition and their, their training. That, that seems like that was almost taking a back seat to how do I actually take control of my career and turn that into a business. Mm-hmm. So that's how I made the transition because I ended up having more clients in business coaching. And, you know, at the that's beginning, amazing. It's, it was, it's a kind of a weird journey, right? But I yeah, guess it's I'd, just kind of like a different rabbit hole. You know, yeah. you start somewhere and end up somewhere. It's like the YouTube rabbit hole. You know, you watch makeup videos and you end up looking at rabbits. Yeah. And <laughs> now a lady you think, how did I get here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. Well, that's exactly what happened. And I started off as a generalist business coach. But Mm -hmm. over time, um, I wrote a book back in 2015 and did a large um, publicity tour and through- Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm going to pause you right here. You wrote a book. Yes, I wrote a book. You are an author. That is awesome. Tell me about (laughs) your book. So the book is called The Heart of Entrepreneurship. And the whole Uh idea of the book was I put, (laughs) it was actually the process- This is going to sound so weird. I didn't want to write this book because I knew it would be amazing for other people. I wrote this book because I felt like I needed to close the chapter on some of my shit. Beat that out if you need to. (laughs) I've had such, such a hard few years that I felt like for me it was just telling my story of how I'd got here, 20 years in business, you know, being married at 17, doing it with at then three children, three businesses, you know, I felt like I had a lot of stories to share, but I also felt like I needed to, to close the chapter on, you know, the marriage, another relationship that I'd had and just move on. 
So the book is all about my journey of how I started my businesses, the lessons that I'd got from being in business for 20 years, but also intertwined with my personal stories of how things that are happening in your personal life can really affect your business. When good things happen, your business goes gangbusters. And when really right. bad things happen, it's really hard to keep your head above water. So that of was course. the whole idea of that book. And it did. It closed the chapter beautifully and allowed me to move on. It also meant that so many people related to me in such a different way. And, you know, my personal training clients at the time all read it and they were ringing me in tears going, we had no idea you were going through that. Well, you turned up at the gym inspiring us and motivating us. And we're thinking, oh my God, we just want to be like you and stay happy all the time and realizing that that was happening behind the scenes. And, you know, so it was a book that, um, it helped people really understand who I was and, and make our relationships closer and also That's give, amazing. give people the, the permission to just fluff through life. <laughs> it's that yeah. we've all, we're all on a journey and it, and it, it yeah, it was, it was great. So, so at the time that I launched the book, I did a big mm -hmm. publicity campaign and okay. I would make a note of all the questions that people asked me. And I did probably at that time, I think around 70 podcast interviews. So there was a lot of questions and the questions I got were interesting because they're people I'd never met before, just like you and I have never met in person. And they would ask questions of things that I'd completely forgotten about. You know, when you've been in business, for 20 something years, you forget things that, that have happened. Mm -hmm. So I started to realize where, what I call my genius zone was. I realized the parts of business that I, were, uh, that I was really, really, really good at. And that's how my business coaching transitioned into helping people to build their profile and develop their thought leadership to become the go-to expert in the industry. Because I realized that that was my genius zone. It was actually at the front end of the business, helping people get clear on their message, helping them to get clear on their products and their programs, get clear on their values, use that to build their audience and to create content and, and you know, helping them to um, do joint ventures and partnerships and get publicity. So because I realized that was my genius zone, I packaged all that up and created something that was unique to me and my genius zone, which is now exactly what I help other people do, draw that genius zone out of them to create something that absolutely lights them up and has them living a life that they absolutely, you know, used to think was a distant dream and now they're making it a reality. That is so awesome. Wow. I'm, I'm just so, you know, taken aback. I'm so impressed with how you've built something so wonderful and how you are helping other people. So um, just for the sake of all of us girls, um, if it's not a breach um, in any way, could you give us a few examples of women businesses that you have helped? Absolutely. I'd love to. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that everyone's dream is different. So my mm -hmm. dream is to travel and be on the road all the time. And that's what I'm, I, I'm not at the position where I'm on the road 24 seven, you know, 365 days, but I do spend a lot of time away or, you know, traveling around just Australia or overseas. Um, I've got another client who is a, um, a comedian. She helps uh, presenters and speakers put humor into their presentations in a super classy way. So she works with That's awesome. to help them to keep people awake in boardrooms. You know? that, that is a much needed business. <laughs> uh, and she's doing very well, let me tell you. But when she came to me, her dream was to spend time with her daughter. She's got a daughter who I think is about eight years old. And what she wanted to do was be able to spend you know, when her daughter wasn't at school, spend all her time with her daughter so that, um, you know, she could just grow her business out outside of that and, um, and not be this hustling entrepreneur. So we've helped her do that to build her business online so that can, she can spend more time um, with her daughter. Uh, I've got someone else that is actually in a manufacturing business and she has been in business for 25 years, has built a huge um, brand here in Australia. It's not international yet, but real, but she built it from the ground up from having a restaurant in her own house to being the largest manufacturer of, 
um, of Artisan Crisp Bread in Australia. And she now is a speaker on how to build your brand from the ground up to be a glo- like a, a national icon. And for her, her children have left home, so she wanted to be on the speaker circuit and speaking a lot. So we've helped her, her do that, and then that's opened up a lot of doors for her. Um, and then other people that... Um, there's another lady who was only working with clients one-on-one. She had, she, her burning desire was to get her message out to as many people as possible. When you're working with one-on-one clients, there's only a certain number of clients that you can speak with in a day or a week or a month. So we helped her to um, change her business model to a one-to-many model so that she could coach groups of people all at the same time so that she's able to have her message reach more people. So, you know, for all of those, the end outcome is the same. They're creating exactly what it is that makes their heart sing. And that's what I'm most yes. um, in proud of doing. In all different ways. Exactly. Every one of them are all in, in something different in, and they're presenting it in some different way. Mm, absolutely. That is so awesome. Um, so Samantha, I have um, at least one more question, depending on how you answer. Um, depends on if I have any more. But um, I would like to know, um, so first of all, and here, of course, here is my other questions. Number one, how long have you been doing this? Remind me, did you say the year that you started? So, well, I've been in business for 25 years, but I went into the coaching world in 2011. So okay, okay. Years, 2011. Yeah. yeah, that is, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm so excited for how you have built everything and how many women you are helping because Lord knows that when women get together, we are a force to be reckoned with. We're a community of girls who help each other in every sense of the word. So what I would like to know is, is what is it that you have to offer for all of the community of women who are listening? So what I've got is what I call the freedom business matrix. So what this is, is uh, there's nine different strategies that I've used to be able to monetize my expertise in different ways. So whether you're in a corporate job, whether you're in a business, you can implement any of these strategies alongside what it is that you're doing to start building out your freedom-based business so you can really design your life. So all you need to do is go to my website, samanthariley.global forward slash freedom and uh, download a copy of the Freedom Business Matrix. And like I said, whether you're in a job or in a business, there is something in there that you can implement to start really bringing in more income, having more freedom and making a bigger impact, which I believe that anyone that's in my world, it doesn't matter whether I know them or not, if they've been attracted to me, I know that making an impact really is something that lights them up from the inside. That is awesome. So you heard it, girls. If there is any of you who are interested in basically broadening broadening your horizons in your job or jumping into the entrepreneurial field, Samantha has a list of things for you to start checking off. And Samantha, I'm, I'm so excited that you've been with us. But before I let you go... I always ask my guests um, about their crowning moment of the week and their flop moment for the week. <laughs> I did mention this to you a little bit earlier. Usually I surprise people and catch them off guard, but um, I want to know just this week something simple that you had a great crowning moment and maybe not so great flop moment. All right. Okay. Let's go with the crowning moment first. (laughs) So my crowning moment would be actually having a strategy session with one of my clients. So even though I don't do a lot of one-on-one work, I did do, I do enjoy it still with my high end clients. And we had a one-on-one session at the point where I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. And by the time we walked away, he was so fired up because all it was was just asking the right questions to get right back down into his why. Why are you doing this and why does it matter to you? So that was just amazing. And he's he's had an amazing week just ticking off the boxes. So that's definitely a crowning moment. That is great. And sometimes you just need like that outside voice sometimes, you know, just to tell you that it's okay and you're going to get through it. That that's just great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, flop moment. Look, um, gosh, there could Let's be have it. so, Let's have it. so many. 
But I guess the one that comes to mind happened only not that long ago. No, I am a dancer. I did have a dance studio for 20 years. Um, I, I was in, in dance companies and most people don't believe it when they see me because I trip over my feet all the time. They're like, how can you dance and you can't even walk? So just, <laughs> just, we just went to our farmer's market this morning. I'm coming up the stairs with the tray of eggs and all the vegetables and I have literally tripped up the stairs coming into my oh, apartment no. and everything went everywhere. So that was definitely my flop moment. Oh my gosh. Oh. How many eggs did you break? Oh my goodness. 30. It was oh, one of the no! big trays of all the, you know, the beautiful free range eggs. But anyway, <laughs> there you go. There's my flop moment. A dancer that can't even walk in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> Very good. Well, girls, that is it for this episode of Adventuring the Girl Life. And you can find all of Samantha's information in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. And until next week, girls, adventure on.